alongside my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. We are set up here at Titan Stadium in Ottawa, where the Titans of Ottawa Glandorf are set to entertain the Defiance Bulldogs as we close out the regular season here in the Western Buckeye League. Yeah, partner, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Two teams that are going to be really physical here tonight. It's a Defiance team getting themselves ready to get into the playoffs next week, and it is a Ottawa Glandorf team that wants to send their seniors out the right way. And don't be confused by the 1-8 and eight record for Ottawa Glandorf. Randy, if you took about 14 points and sprinkled it in their, <laughs> their schedule up and down somewhere, they'd be about a 500 club. So, very capable Titan team. And before we get any further into our night, I want to tell you that our pregame show is brought to you by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender. All right, partner, let's talk quickly about the Defiance Bulldogs coming in at 6-3, and 5-3 and three in the WBL. They are in the playoffs right now, ninth in Division Three, Region 10. So this game important for a couple of different reasons. One, they haven't won here in Ottawa in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And two, should they snap that streak tonight, very good chance they're going to be playing a home football playoff game, which is another thing they haven't done in a very long time. Interesting that you say that, partner, because uh, that was one of the things that Travis Cooper said to me. Like, the first time I went to practice on Tuesday and talked to him, he brought that up. He said, it's important to our guys that we get a win over at OG. It hasn't happened in way too long. Yeah, this is the 55th meeting. OG leads the all-time series 29-24-1. and one. Defiant snapped an eight-game uh, losing streak to the Titans with a uh, win last season. And we'll get into uh, some of the keys uh, as we get into this one. We are going to see, I believe, the uh, Titans on offense first. Partner, they are led junior quarterback Peyton Coleman, 106 of 227 for 1,261 yards and 12 touchdowns. Offense really hasn't been uh, the biggest problem for the Titans this year. Well, one thing you always know when you go against Ottawa Glendor, Coach Treiner, old offensive lineman, what, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to block extremely well at the point of attack. They always run the football fundamentally sound is what the word you always hear when it comes to OG. Titans come in at uh, one and eight, one and seven in the WBL. That one came a week ago, where they scored a couple of touchdowns late to knock off Shawnee 16-15. But Miles, like you had said, this is a team that's really touchdown here, touchdown there, stop here, stop there. You're looking at you know four and five, five and four. Yeah, usually you see a record one and eight, and you look at the schedule and you're like blow out here, blow out there. Not the case with OG. They've been in a ton of football games this year. Defiance will uh, send this one high in the air. This one is going to bounce and will finally be fielded at around the 15-yard line. And we are underway. And again, our pregame show tonight has been brought to you by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender. Partner, we're going to see the Titans at offense first. Miles, what are some keys of the game tonight for the OG Titans? Yeah, got to establish the line of scrimmage, right? If you don't run the football here, it's going to be a long night for you because we know Defiance can put up some points. Titans are going to that spread look. They've done that most of the year. Let's have this opening drive. Beginning at their own 19. This one out in the flat. A little positive yardage there on first down. Yeah, fantastic block by Metzger on the outside. Run that quick little bubble. Inside slot, kind of uncovered. Not a guy over top of him. Take advantage of it. Good gain. We'll call it about nine. And it's going to bring up a second and a one. Just shy of the 28-yard line. Two receivers on the far side, one to the near side. Well, Ball's on the ground. Ball does come loose. And it looks like the Titans are going to fall on top of that. I believe it's Grant Evers that falls on it. You go from second down and short to oops. And it's going to back them up to about the 24. Loss of four on the play. Second and one is now turned into third and five. Defensively for Defiance, we'll talk a lot about a couple of junior linebackers, Joey Robinson, Cohen, or Cohen Stockman. Yeah, Robinson leads this team in tackles. You'll see him right there, or over top of the right guard. That shotgun look again, Coleman will get rid of this one, trying to throw that out to the far side. Pass is going to be incomplete, just over the head of Grant Evers. 
And it was a promising drive. Started with the uh, good play on first down, but the Titans will have to punt the football away. That defines very fortunate, right? That's one that should have been completed and would have been an easy first down. Got to take a little bit of something off it, right? When he jobs as a quarterback, throw catchable balls. That one didn't need to be about a 95 mile an hour fastball. Defines have a pair of return men standing uh, on their own side of the field right now at about the 44 yard line awaiting this punt. This one. A wobbler off the side of the foot does take a bit of an OG bounce and roll heads out of bounds at about the 40 yard line that only had about 16 yards on the punt. Well, all special team coaches when they talk to their punters they always talk about the drop right make sure you drop it close to the foot mm -hmm. dropped it way too high the ball moves on you thus you get the shank to the right ideal starting position for defiance. They look out the 41 so 17 yards on the punt here 10 29 left to go opening border on our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Um, balanced formation here to the far side. Defiance last uh, week coming off a uh, shutout loss to Salina, where uh, Coach Cooper said not the best effort, losing 17 to nothing. Led by junior quarterback Brez Zetful, 91 of 146, 1,108 yards, 16 touchdowns, 7 interceptions on the year. He's gotten better as the season's gone by, too. A lot of turnovers early in the year, a lot of missed opportunities with the throw. Not so much here of late. He's got full command of this offense. Going to see a lot of uh, Brogan Castillo and Anthony Wilder. Castillo leading rusher, 598 yards. Wilder, 507 yards, five touchdowns. Rushing, 401 yards, eight touchdowns. Receiving. And there is Wilder, and he'll pick up about a yard. So with defiance on offense, Miles would be some keys to the game tonight for the Bulldogs. You know, I'll give it to the Wizard. Wizard Wilder, he is a fast man. Randy, he runs 21 miles per hour at his top speed. Our good friends at uh, Optimal Performance Center gave us that stat right there. That is crazy, 21 miles an hour. Call him the Wizard. You know why he's the Wizard? Why is he the Wizard? Because he makes defenses disappear oh, when he that. gets the ball in his hands. Everyone in defiance looking over to their sideline for the play. Then everyone will check the armbands. Now you get the feeling this is four down territory. Want to take advantage of this far, uh, awesome starting position. Zeph, a long throw going from the near hash all the way to that far sideline. That allows the OG defense to rally. This receiver is going to be brought down shy of the first down at about the 35 yard line. Yeah, this is going to be a go time. Travis Cooper, head coach and play caller at Defiance, loves to go for it on fourth down. Why not? You got them really in great field position right here. Even if you don't pick it up, your defense showed that they can get Otto Glendorf off the field. The ball's going to be marked back at the 36, so we're going to call it fourth and five. And a change in personnel. Still got time with 15 on the play clock. Zepfel runs back in. He's got some new guys with him. As Jordan Wright, number 45, that just checked in, another young guy that could run for this defiance team. It's two receivers in the near side, one to the far side. Zipful looking that far side, is going to dump it off underneath. Castillo trying to make one man miss. He's going to try to run for the first down, but a good stop in the open field made there by Vinny Brinkman, who will stop him, and OG is going to take over on downs. Yeah, kind of an odd selection there by Zeffel. Had a guy in the post run right between the two high safety, allows Alex to check down to Castile. Well played by Ottawa Glandorf. Titans will take over now with their own 36. Just under nine to go, opening quarter on our Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Now faking the run, looking to throw. Pass is going to be incomplete middle of the field as Grant Evers could not haul that into his body. Uh, Grant Evers has been involved so many times early in this game. That time couldn't come up with it. Would have been another big play. Faking the quarterback lead, pulling it up. Look, remember Tim Tebow when he used to run that with yeah. Florida? And you see it at the goal line. That was a little bit of a variation of it here in the middle of the field. Incomplete pass brings up second and 10 for the Titans from their own 36. Three receivers come to the near side. They'll throw the opposite way. There's yardage for a first down. Pass is caught by Grant Schrader will come up with it. Now how about that throw though? That was a laser to Schrader on the out cut. Put it on the outside shoulder as soon as the cut was made. 
great pitch and catch for Otto Glandorf. He talked a little bit about uh, head coach uh, Ken Schreiner now in his 28th year at Band of the Titans, 198-114. See a man going in motion here. And we're going to get whistles and flags. And we're going to have an illegal procedure. I can tell you what happened there. Other than somebody moved, right? We all know that. The defiance worked a ton on when they recognized motion, allowing the defense alignment to know it because this is a motion-heavy run game for Otto Glandorf. You follow that motion, run game's going to go there nine times out of ten. Defiance was calling it right away. That enticed a false start. It's going to back up the Titans now to a first and 15 from their own 42. Coleman rolling out. He's able to run with the football. He's going to do it right here. He'll take off, and he's going to be brought down just shy of midfield. Boy, he put a move on Jazz and Phillips, didn't he? Phillips had him one-on-one -on -one in the backfield. Gave him a little okey-doke. See you later. Yoy and double yoy. Phillips missed him. Got positive yardage. Yeah, he's able to pick up six. So got the penalty yardage plus one back. He's going to bring up second and nine. Abel Rubio was able to uh, get him down. See Kuhlman uh, called the a loaf of bread runner. Is hanging it out there, right? Waiting for someone to chop that ball out. Second and nine, a little movement out of the front line for Defiance. Both teams are classic uniforms, so if you're new to these schools, OG in the blue with the gold. Defiance with their classic whites with the blue helmets that Coach Cooper made sure returned. There's a run to get to midfield. Abel Rubio comes up from his linebacker position, gets the stop right there. A little bit of cat and mouse game going on right now. OG trying to put formation to the field, make Defiance adjust to it. Defiance is saying, nope, we're not going to do it. We're going to keep our too high safety. OG tried to come back to the weak side against that. Defiance was ready for it because they, they didn't unbalance themselves. Third and oh, they're going to call it eight. It might be closer to seven. As you can see, nose of the football just tucked inside to the midfield stripe. Coolman holds it out. He's going to fire again. This one's going to be incomplete. Looking for Schrader on uh, the uh, route in the middle of the field. And it looks like the Titans will punt the football away once again. They just never got his feet underneath him. Did he, not. He has had his feet separated. Left foot was going towards the defiant sideline. Side so it's going to get you to push the football, drop your elbow, thus the incompletion. Connor Kitchen, the senior, on for his second time to punt the football away. Remember, the first one netted 17 yards side of his foot. That snap took a little bit uh, to get back. This one much better. That one will spiral, and it's going to carry all the way into the end zone. So you get the good and the bad, you get the 17 yarder, and then you follow that up with the 50 yarder into the end zone. Everybody was nervous for Defiance because what they think Wilder was gonna do about the two yard line, pick it up, right? He smartly let it roll into the end zone. OG though might have a problem moving forward with their punt game. Did you see how close Defiance got to that punt? I did. Right, and Kitchens, he's a slow guy with a one, two, kind of a three kick guy. And the, the snap is not a timely snap either. It's kind of a looping one. Defiance might have to go after that later in the game. What else to tell you that our instant replays tonight are brought to you by the Union Bank. The Union Bank committed to you. There's a good play on first down as the Bulldogs will get out uh, of their 20-yard line, get a first down. Yeah, I think that's what Defiance does best, right? You get the Punisher, Brogan Castile, going straight towards the goal line, A and B runner. Missed some time this year with a, an ankle injury, but he looks like he's healthy now. Pick up a 13, he'll go right back to him, right up the middle, and he's going to use that body to fall forward across the 35, close to about the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Yeah, he's a guy that was about 1,200 yards last year carrying the football. His numbers are way down with only 506, but again, missed about four games because of that ankle injury. And if he is healthy, buddy, this is a dangerous team moving into the playoffs because they have all their weapons back. So we'll call it just shy of the 38-yard line, second and about five coming up here for the Bulldogs. Those two backs again. This time they'll fake it to him, swing it out. Here is Wilder. Wilder's able to cut up field. Looks like he'll have a first down before he is finally brought down by Vinny Brinkman. Wow. Why do we call him the wizard? Because he made Griffin disappear. Griffin had him one-on-one -on -one in the flat. 
Mm, give you a little head and shoulder fake, and I'll use those quick feet I have. Play gets close to 10 yards. It's enough for a Bulldog first down. Out to their own 48, single receiver each way. Zip fell back to Castillo. Castillo works that left side. He'll get into Titan territory before he's pushed backwards. That's Schrader that comes up, number 42, Alex Schrader. That's how you get the, the powerful backs that want to keep driving their legs. What do you do? You go after the knees, hold on to those legs. They can't use those feet to drive. Gain of three on the run is going to bring up second and nine as Defiance is at the OG side of the field once again, the 49-yard line. Zipful sent a man in motion. Get the quick pitch. This is Wilder trying to get him in space, able to turn up field, but he's going to be brought down after a short gain. That's Grant Evers that makes the tackle. Number 18, Grant Evers. Grant Evers with the tackle. And if you watch what OG is doing, they always have three down guys, right? And then trying to find who's going to be in that box, that's something that's tough for offensive mm -hmm. linemen because those three linebackers are sometimes joined by the flat defenders as well. They can have as many as nine guys in the box by movement before the snap. Big but three on the play is going to bring up third and four from the 46. And a late formation change going to be inside of five seconds. Don't know if uh, Defiance is going to be able to get this off. Zipful switches everything around. He's going to quickly get rid of the football, and this one's going to be dropped. They're going to call it incomplete. They'll say the ball went forward. Looking for that sophomore Jordan Wright. Yeah, Wright's a guy that is extremely fast. I watched him play corner and on the scout team the other day, and he was uh, so good at turning his hips. He's going to be a guy that's going to be dynamic with the ball in his hands. That time, probably smart drop in it because there was a bunch of OG defenders around. And for the second time, Defiance is going to go for it on fourth down on the OG side of the field. A too high safety, cover two. Trying a little trap play here in Castile. We got everyone going to the right side. Castile's going to go to the left, and he'll have the first down as Griffin is seen at number eight. Looks like finally made the stop, but not until Castile was able to get inside the 40 and enough for a Bulldog first down. Uh, how about the call by Travis Cooper on fourth down? We're going to roll to the right. Nope, we're going to run a variation of the Statue of Liberty with a Punisher, Brogan Castile. And I tell you, Cement wasn't there. It might be a touchdown because he, he was the only guy that was able to top, stop Castile on that part of the field. Pickup of seven is enough for a first down at the 39. Go right back to Castile. That time he's not going to run out of that hit. As Dana Dooling able to take him down number 13. And Alex Schrader. Well, that's what you got to do with Castillo. You either got to gang tackle or go at his legs, stop him from turning away. Pick up two on that run is going to bring up second and eight from the 37. Ninth play of the drive coming up here for the Bulldogs. A two back set normally means it's going to be run. Saw the receiver to our side get closer to the hash mark. And run's going to come. Able to use some more of that speed as Defiance just pulls guys off the bench and just likes it out. This time it is Abel Rubio. And Rubio is going to have a big first down just outside the red zone. Well, you remember early in the year where Castillo goes down with the ankle injury and everybody's like, oh, what are we going to do? Well, no problem. Abel Rubio really stepped forward 353 yards on the, the year in the absence of Castile. That's a part of that three-headed monster mm -hmm. ground game that Defiance has. Well, Rubio picks up 16 there. He'll get the call once again, able to carry a defender or two, and he's going to get inside our Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. Well, you always like guys that play linebacker on defense and then carry the ball on offense because you know one thing, they're going to be very tough, right? Rubio gets hit by a defensive lineman, doesn't bother him. He just keeps churning away, gets part of the yardage. That's Warnicky that tried to bring him down, I believe. And whenever anyone gets inside the red zone tonight, it is a Wright State University Lake Campus red zone. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. It was actually Austin Haley that made the tackle on the plate before you see him getting up at the bottom of the pile again, getting involved in the tackle. Doing in on the latest stop. Gain of four of the play is going to bring up third and short. Call it third and three as we near two minutes to go. Opening quarter 
on our Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Zipfel in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, gets this one out to the flat pass, has caught Rubio with it, and he's gonna get near the five yard line. That should be enough for another first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I'm not sure Rubio was his first read, but if he wasn't, he's gonna watch this film tomorrow and say, oh, I had a touchdown in the middle of the field. The wizard was wide open about the post. Nobody was around him, it would have been easy six. And a call it 10 of the play is gonna bring up first and goal from the four yard line. Zipfel in the shotgun once again has a man in motion. It's going to be the extra blockers. They go right to the the junior Rubio, who is in for the Dales concrete and decorative stamping touchdown. Now it's Stockman that led the way along with the Punisher Coast Castile. And when you bring that motion out of a two back set, all you're doing is getting into the old power eye formation that people used to run on the goal line. Just a different way to do it out of the spread, defiance uses it effectively to get the first score of the game. Abel Rubio scores from four yards out. Again, it's a Dales Concrete Decker stamping a touchdown. Called Dales Concrete Decker stamping and lipstick for all of your commercial and residential. Concrete needs extra points. Is good and our extra points tonight are brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Give them a call 419-384-3392. So the Bulldogs strike first. They lead 7-0. We'll take a break here at WOSN. Solid effort out of defiance. 13 plays, 80 yards get into the end zone. Abel Rubio from four yards out. Makes the seven nothing defiance for strike first on our Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard as the kick return for the Titans will come out past the 30 yard line. You know, already an important drive in this football game for Otto Glandorf. Doesn't look as if the line of scrimmage is gonna be won by them defensively as Defiance really controlled the ground game on that last drive. You gotta be able to answer the score, right? Mm-hmm. Titans will start this drive from their own 32, the minute 25 left to go quarter number one. Coleman gets that high snap, able to get the handoff here on first down, a good game there. Now, looked a lot better than what it was. That was uh, stopped quickly. That Cohen Stockman who it looked like he was going to go out and cover the flat on trips, and at the last second, knife down on an outside linebacker blitz, made the play. A nice job by Clay Greeley, the defensive coordinator at Defiance. He's got a really good game plan early in this football game. Game of one on the run is going to bring up second and nine. Two receivers and an H-back come to the near side. A little bit of window dressing, and that one uh, read well by Defiance as Vinny Brinkman is going to be stopped for a loss. All right, there's that man again, Cohen Stockman. To flip the side of the field, they're going to run counter back to him. Doesn't matter. He's still going to blow it up. He has been a force on the last two plays for uh, the Bulldog defense. Third and long now. Huge play in this football game for OG. Yeah, it's a loss of five. It's going to bring up third and about 14. If OG's not careful, they're going to have to punt this ball back over two defines with time still remaining in the opening quarter. They have to play at least get one more snap in here before the quarter ends. Coleman looking to throw, rolls out, has a man. This one is caught. That's going to be enough for a first down. Nice job there. Grant Schrader able to come up with that one. Well, if you're going to play cover three, you, you want to make sure nobody gets behind you, but at the same time, be aware of where the stick's at on third down and 15, right? Don't let a receiver just kind of settle up at the sticks and make a catch. A little bit too much cushion that time by Logan Hutchison. So it is 17 yards for the first down to the 45. That is our final play of the opening quarter, and we'll take a break here at WOSL. Dressing here to open up the uh, second quarter. Yeah, everybody's got to run the shovel pass. Little shovel shovel pass, pass yeah. Run. One read well by that front group for Defiance. Hey, that's one of those plays, even if you don't 
complete it successfully and it's just an incomplete pass, mm -hmm. it, what it does is slows that defensive line down, right? Everybody's like, oh, ooh, they almost got us. we got to be aware of the screen game of OG. Gain of uh, three on the play is going to bring up second and seven. It's Coleman hands this one off as they go back to uh, Brinkman, their top runner. He will get to midfield. That's going to bring up a third and five. Now watch Abel Rubio knife through there. Number six playing linebacker cuts through two blocks. He is so tough and so small for linemen to find. The next thing you know, he is by the lineman making a tackle. Remember Sam Mills for the Saints years yeah. ago? A little bit for the Carolina Panthers. Same kind of guy, right? One of those little short guys playing linebacker. Big play here, third and five. Coleman, that uh, quick pass, is able to get this one. Running that slant once again as Dane Dooling will haul it into the 35-yard line. Yeah, it's Howerton that brings him down and and Clay Greeley's going to ask, what are we doing on third down? Two big conversions for OG, and especially with Howerton, who he's aligned right over top of dueling. Should have been able to eat that up. Great route, great completion. OG living large on third down. Pick up a 15, that sets them up at the Defiance 35. Titans trail 7 0 on our Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Back to the ground with Brinkman. Brinkman working that left side is finally going to be brought down. So we saw Eli Howerton, number 13, junior, come up and make the stop. A yeah, really good answer by OG on this drive, though. Remember, we talked before they got the football. It's an important drive because mm -hmm. it looked like Defiance was about to assert their dominance. And they have answered. Got to come away, away with points here, though. Pick up four on the run is going to bring up second and six. That was one thing that uh, and Coach Cooper has tried to tell his team. Really, anyone that will listen all week is that don't count out OG at one and eight. We're going to get their best. Here's a run up the middle as they go to uh, Evers. Evers will get to about the, looks like, 27 yard line or so. And how long before you break out the Evers, the Tinkers, the Chance? When, when are you going to break that one out, old Cubs fan? There is a uh, certain demographic that now has no idea who or what. Oh, absolutely, you speak right? Of. Yeah. The fact that I know it is amazing. By the way, it's a double play combination from long turn, time ago. Turn of the century, and when we mean turn of the century, we don't mean the year 2000. Third and short coming up here for the Titans. Colvin looking to throw under a little bit of pressure. Is going to lay this one up for the outside, and it's going to be hauled in for the Titan touchdown. Well, it's Grant Schrader that's going to catch it. He has been the big time receiver for OG all year long. Had to wait for the post to come to him. But what a great move. Puts his foot in the ground, gives a little bit of a corner fake that beats the corner to his side all by himself. And buddy, I think he could have fair caught that one, right? Great adjustment to catch it. And Schrader, another big play for them. Our latest Dale's concrete and decorative stamping touchdowns. A 27 yard touchdown reception from Schrader. Add on to that, the fact that our Northwest Ohio recycling extra point is up and good, and we are now tied at 7. 903 left to go, opening half here, and we'll take a break on WOSN. Well, nice pitch and catch there to end the uh, drive. For the Titans, finishes the 27 yard touchdown pass to Grant Schrader. We are now tied at seven here. 9.03 left to go in our opening half of football. Yeah, what a great drive by Peyton Coleman, right? Had two big third down conversions that he used with his arm, the big third and 15 he got, and then the pass to Schrader for the big touchdown. Th touchdown number 13, 30 year, 30 air for Peyton Coleman. So OG matches uh, Defiance's 13 play drive with a nine play drive. Ball squibs around before it's finally fielded at about the six yard Ruh -ruh. line. Problem is, it's Abel Rubio. Rubio to see him right up the middle, and he's able to get out across the 45 yard line. Well, he's just a sudden young fella, isn't he? Everything he does is sudden. Picks that ball up, and he gets vertical in a fast way. Went from, oh my, we're in trouble, to a really great play for the Bulldogs. 8.55 left to go, opening half. And again, we want to tell you that our instant replays tonight are brought to you by the Union Bank. Union Bank committed 
to yield. So the Bulldogs start from their own 47. See three receivers come to the near side, one to the far side. Zipful in a shotgun, has a back to his left. Looking to throw, he's gonna fire this one. And it's gonna be incomplete. Officials are gonna say that was trapped by the junior, Brady Borton. The one that Defiance is gonna to wanna to have back because Borton, if he catches it in stride, only has to make one quick move and he's celebrating in the end zone. The screen and go. It had burned that secondary of OG. Second down coming up here for Defiance. As everyone looks over. Now Dick Vermeil always said 80% of second down and tens are what? Runs. Runs. We'll see what it is here. Well, Defiance is going to flip the formation as Anthony Wilder is going to come to the near side. Now he's going to go in motion. Wilder looks like the safety valve. They'll get it to him. Wilder able to get a yard or two, so not, not a run in design, but still the same concept of one, get a couple of yards. Now, what you want to do is get some type of positive yardage so your third down is not so big. Uh, third and nine, though, is not what they wanted. Well covered by OG. They've done a really good job of bottling up Wilder. It's only not been one guy that's tried to make the tackle. They've been rallying to get him to the ground. Otherwise, he can use his speed. But like Miles has said, it's now third and nine for Defiance. They've got the football at their own 48. It's been near eight minutes to go open quarter on our Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. A lot of communication, two on the play clock. Play is away, Zipful. Rolling out under some pressure. He's got to get rid of this one. One in Castillo. Had a big body right in his face. Yeah, the big body was Dane Dooling. Unlucky 13 for Defiance. Dane Dooling playing well disciplined. Doesn't buy the fake. The spin out reverse by Defiance was going to be there, but Dane Dooling, double D, says you got to pump the football. First time Defiance did not get into the OG side of the field. They'll have to settle for punting the football at the 48. So two yards shy. This one is snapped back. High spiral punt. That one's going to bounce and roll. And that one is going to be down inside the five yard line. Now, I think about the two yard line, and this is going to be one of those hidden yardage moments, right? You come up, you fair catch that football, you save your team about 18 yards in field position. You let it roll, and all of a sudden, Defiance is going to be down it inside your own five. Terrible, precarious field position for OG. Oh, boy, hate to be that punt return and go to the sideline and face your coach over there. Why aren't you catching that football, young man? Titans have to start this drive on their own one. Still 7.47 left to go. Opening half here in a seven-all game. We were promised we'd get a good one here, and it's been that so far. A huge cushion. Coleman looking to throw, first down, trying that far sideline. That one's going to be incomplete. Antonio Lopez had that one. Problem is, he's wearing colors of the opposite team. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. If Lopez is on offense, he probably catches it, right? I don't know what it is when you're on defense and you're a defensive back. It's so tough for you to catch a football. Maybe it's because you're not used to the rotation of the quarterback. I don't know, but definitely one Lopez, if you ask him, should you have had that? He'll say, yeah, that would have been a big play for us. It's going to bring up second and 10 from the one yard line. Yeah, yeah. Coleman with the uh, fake throw on the uh, draw play. They'll get a couple of yards. At some point in time, these OG running backs are going to say, can we not run it at Rubio? Because he is making every tackle on us. Abel Rubio has been absolutely fantastic in the early parts of this game for Defiance. Gain of two on the play is going to bring up third and eight. Just over seven minutes to go before halftime. Quick moving opening half of football here from Ottawa Glandor. Well, it's cowbell time. Defiance says we need more cowbell. It's the only way to make gold records. Now we're going to get a whistle, and the Titans want to take a timeout. It's timeout on the field. 
will step aside as well. Third down coming up for OG when we return. This one is going to be caught, and it looks like enough for a tight first down as they get it out to the far sideline to Grant Schrader. Now, third down has been a bugaboo of defiance on the last two drives. Another big pickup for Ottawa Glandorf. And if you're, you're a defensive back, you always have to be aware of situational football, right? Where is the sticks at? Why is that guy running an out route at about 10 yards? Take that away. But you can't say enough about the great job of Kuhlman to get out of the pocket extend that play and pick up yet another big third down. Schrader is able to kind of wrap himself around the uh, the stick for the marker for the first down. He'll get it out to the 13. Now back on the ground will go the Titans. Well, and that motion comes. That H-back comes in motion. Defiance is ready for the run game. And what they're doing is they're pinching A and B gaps with the defensive line, taking the inside run away. If OG has something where the H-back leads to either C or D gap outside, they might be able to get some big yardage. No gain on the run is going to bring up second and 10 from the 13. And two outside linebackers to the trip side. Quick pitch here. That one's going to be ate up by the Defiance defense. Yeah, you just don't see that very often. It nicely played by Defiance. They brought the both outside linebackers to the trip side, anticipating it was going to be a run right there. Outnumbered OG at the point of attack. Great job of scouting and being prepared by Clay Grewey. The first time we've mentioned the uh, senior Garrett Rodenberger defensively, 82 tackles for him. Part of that secondary, a couple of interceptions as well. Get a one on the play, he's going to bring up third and nine. Third down's kind of been where uh, Ottawa Glandorf has made their uh, eight, so to speak. Schrader again gets this one to the near side, tries to cut up field, is able to get out of a couple of tackles, to get out across the 20, but it looks like he will be just shy of the first down. Oh, they're going to give it to him. My apologies. Another big third down conversion for OG, this time running the tunnel screen. Usually that's a field call, but they ran to the short side. He's able to make two white jerseys miss and gets yet another third down. Defiance is like, can't we just play two downs? Why do we have to play a third down? Third down has been a problem for them all evening long. A Schrader able to wait, uh, weave his way for 10. That's enough for a first down, not to the 24. Remember, this drive started back at the one-yard line for the Titans. Looking to throw again. He'll quickly get this one out to that far side. Andrew Arizari, fantastic work. Number seven is so tough to hook him. Playing that outside linebacker spot. OG tried to get him, get the bubble screen, but he fought across it. Be the first guy to contact. Evers able to haul that one in. Picks up five, second and five. Ball just shy of the 29-yard line. <laughs> Three receivers on the near side, one to the far side. He'll run out of it, going off the right side. Go to run there. As they go to Alec Schrader, who will have, it looks like, enough for a first down as he's just shy of the 35 yard line. Yeah, Alec Schrader, he is a beefy dude, right? Six foot 208. Nothing but shoulder pads and knees coming at you when you try to tackle him. Enough for the first down as the Titans now have this out to the 35. Trying to shorten this game here. This will be the longest drive of the night they've had so far. Kuhlman in the shotgun, long fake. Nice job of the out cut. Gets it to Schrader. Schrader with a spin move. He's going to have another first down as he gets into the defiant side of the field. Wow, this might be the most impressive throw of the night. It is a great throw on the move. As soon as he comes off the fake, he gets his feet in position, and Pullman throws it on a dot. Had to because he outside linebacker is dropping on the cover three, threw it right by the ear hole. Fantastic throw. Stockman had no chance to get around on it. Pick of 18 on the play will give the Titans a first down at the Defiance 
47 yard line. Yeah, what an impressive drive, right? On your own two. And coming out here, even if they don't score right, they did a great job of eating clock and flipping the field. Pistol Luck gonna go to run. As they go back to Evers, Evers able to weave his way inside the 45, down to about the 43. Yeah, sometimes you just might want to call timeout defensively. This has slowed things down. This has been a, a rough drive for Defiance. Just call timeout, kind of like in basketball, right? Call timeout, stop momentum. Right. Yeah. Might be something Defiance wants to look at because all the momentum is with OG right now. Pick him four in the run is going to bring up second and six. See that H-back lined up to the right side. They're going to throw the opposite way. Getting this one out to Ethan Metzger, I believe, number one. Metzger will get shy of the 40-yard line. Boy, Garrett Rodenberg flew up in a hurry. Rodenberger comes up from the safety position. They threw the inside slot because there was an 11-yard cushion. Nobody over there, right? Well, it doesn't matter if Rodenberger flies up that fast. Great job by the safety. Pick up a couple on the pass play. He's going to bring up another third down. This is going to be... Much more manageable for the Titans after what they've been able to convert earlier in this drive. Third and four from the Defiance 41. Coleman in a shotgun, fakes it, fires middle. This one's incomplete. One that juggled a little bit by Metzger could never haul it in. I'm not sure the hit affected it. The ball was coming out, right? Just a little bit behind him, but sometimes quarterbacks will throw it there to get away from the safeties, give you a chance to catch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rodenberger was going to probably jar it loose anyhow, but fourth down, no doubt about it. You go for it here if you're OG, don't you? Yeah, the Titans trying to uh, hold on to this momentum. No, nope, they're actually going to punt it. Well, they're going to send this one away, so... 13th play of the drive is going to be a punt here. 2.15 to play before halftime. There it is. And they're going to fake it. And that one's going to be read by Defiance. They'll be short first man to come up with that one. Looks like Jason Phillips, number 58, senior linebacker. And Defiance is going to snuff out the fake punt attempt, and they're going to take over. Yeah, Phillips had a, a chance to make a play in the backfield early in the game, but Coleman got away from him. Not that time. Well played uh, by the senior. Great job getting the stop on fourth down. How do you like the fake punt there instead of going with your regular offense? I don't know if I do that on fourth and short. The Bulldogs are going to take over at their own 44. It's tied, uh, still tied at seven. And again, a scoreboard tonight brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And now we'll have a false start, so Defiance will be backed up a few yards now, back to their 39. A second false start on the night for Defiance. Offense started out well, but kind of going backwards on the last two drives. So looking to the side of the field, they had a single receiver and then someone cut over. Pass is going to be incomplete. Is that one short hop between TJ Kellermeyer and Anthony Wilder? It's going to bring up second and 15. And Kellermeyer was looking at his quarterback. I was like, uh, was I supposed to come in? A little miscommunication. Now there is a strong wind behind this defiance offense. Zipfel all alone in the backfield fires this one. This pass is caught. And trying to dance around and make a man miss is Wilder. Well, that was stopped immediately there as Jaden Steck Schulte, the junior. Number five for Ottawa Glandorf makes the stop. A defiant sideline was calling for a face mask, but didn't think it was. Just used the shoulder pad to bring Wilder down. Pick up of about seven. We're going to call it third and eight just past the 45 yard line. Zipfel looking. Rolls out, fires, this one is caught again. Wilder trying to race for the first down, and on second effort is able to run out of tackle, and he'll get out of bounds with the first down. Well, they're gonna spot it right at the chains. Uh, the official on the far side. Yeah. They haven't moved the chains at it. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be fourth down. Yeah, I think they might. The official on our side of the field is telling the chains to move. But he's away from the chains. Now they're going to eyeball it. He might have been running in asking for a measurement. And I believe that is what the case is going to be here. Well, I think maybe the right foot of Wilder when he made the cut and made the first man miss and then got vertical. Second effort, as you said, got the first down. Maybe, maybe not. 
but made yeah, that right, right footed stepped on the out, out of bounds. Yeah, line. And apparently from our vantage point, he he ran to the sideline away from us, so obviously did not see as if it would have been the near sideline to us. That clearly was the case that some part of the foot or shoe went out of bounds. All right, what's your guess here? Got it or not? I thought he had it. I didn't realize it was even that short or close. I'm going to say he's but short. But they're going to be just short yeah, by the nose of the football. And these are not the uh, Cleveland Browns 49ers officials, right? Where for some reason the ball is on the, on the stick and that's short. That was an odd call. You being a 49ers fan, what'd you think? Didn't get to see the last couple of minutes of that one. So for all I know, the 49ers scored late in one. <laughs> Came down to a kick. Would you believe that? All right. That's what I heard. Now fourth down, Defiant's gonna go for it. Now here's the thing, right? You've been shotgun all night long. Now you're gonna snap it back five yards to go about two inches. A fourth and inside of a yard, 90 seconds left to go in our opening half. Hey, give it to Castile here, don't you? Oh, you'd have to. Give it to the big fella. Rodenberger will go in motion, now doubles back. He's gonna be an H back to that right side. They'll run straight ahead. There's the yard and more, so Defiance will get the first down. And Matt Ariola, number 54, did a great job paving the way for that big fourth down conversion. And Defiance looks like they're gonna call their first timeout of the night with 126. And so Defiance taking a timeout, and we'll take one as well here as Defiance continues late in this opening half. able to convert on uh, fourth down. Bulldogs have it at the OG 42 here, the minute 26 left to go before halftime. Continuing this drive in a 7-7 game. There's one thrown off. This one is going to be incomplete. It looks like Castillo unable to hang on to that one. Yeah, just a little bit behind him, I think Castillo tried to run with it before he had it. Would have gave him positive yardage on first down that every offensive coordinator loves. OG staying in this too high safety look, cover two or cover four, that allows you to have the underneath stuff if you want it. See the empty set this time. Zip full. This might have been a design run the entire way. Middle of the field, he's going to slide down. He will have enough for the first down as he's able to get down at about the 30 yard line. Yeah, caught OG in a blitz. Zeppel alertly takes it off. Nobody in the middle field uh, once the first guy is by you. Big yardage smartly slides down for the first down. He'll get 12 on the run as they go back to that empty set once again. Zipfel rolls out to the far side. He's going to throw this one away. Flag comes in as well. Now, I think they're either going to have a hold or a man upfield against Defiance, but they're signaling hold. Yeah, that is the call. So that will back the Bulldogs up. Yeah, it's just going to be creative blocking. Can't use the hands where you grab the jersey. You're not allowed to do that. What? Inside the framework once in a while, but you get outside, they're going to call it. What are you supposed to grab onto? No, that's the thing, right? Just grab inside to the chest plate, and you're going to be okay. So the 10-yard penalty walks back uh, to the 40-yard line for Defiance here, just under a minute to go opening half. A yeah, good screen down right here if Defiance elects to break that one out. Zipful looks near side, fires this one. And that pass is going to be caught at the 20 yard line, going back to Brady Borton. Yeah, Borton, the second leading receiver on this team with 22 catches coming into tonight. Had a tough one earlier, squeeze out of his hands. Got that one. Great catch to move the second down, first down and 20, to now second down and two. Zipful fakes it, he's gonna look at a throw, or run once again, he's able to get out of bounds. Flag comes in at the end of this one. Clock stopped right now with 31 seconds before halftime. I have no idea how he didn't throw that. That was like Ben Roethlisberger, right, where he sl slinged the ball all the way through, and then you stop at the last second. He had everybody convinced that he threw that football. Against the all right, it looks like Defiance will be penalized once again for blocking the back. I think it's going to be Wilder when he is peeling back to protect his quarterback on the run. He was able to get a part of an OG defender, but got the back part. <laughs> Defiance backed, looks like, to the 
No, they didn't have that marked. They're going to remark it now. Back to the 27, it looks like. Hey, remember, it's the spot of the foul. So if everybody's like, how's it second down after second and one, now it's second and seven, it was because of the spot of the foul. Yeah. Zipfel under yeah. some pressure. He's going to go down back at his 40-yard line. And as that guy, Dane Dueling again, second big play he has made today in the Defiance backfield, and this might be the biggest one so far. And Defiance and not in a hurry to use one of the remaining two timeouts. They might be willing to either run one more play or take the 7-7 game into the locker room. And they just get the snap off. Zipfel looking to throw, got a flag out. Looking for the end zone. This one's going to be incomplete, but see what this is going to be. Yeah, it's going to be a hold against Defiance in the end of half. So they will wave off the penalty for Defiance. The incomplete pass ends the opening half. 7 7 on our scoreboard, brought to you by Structure Ohio. Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts, excuse me. And we'll take a break here at WOSF. with you here. Time to take a look at some halftime adjustments. Halftime adjustments are brought to you by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking financial service needs. Visit your statebank.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender. All right, partners, some halftime adjustments here. Let's start with the visiting Defiance Bulldogs. Third down, right? How about that? Third down, get off the field. The, the big third down conversions go back to early in the game. This was going to be a, a much different game as being dominated by Defiance until third and 15 was picked up by OG. Game changed drastically after that. How many times on that long drive from the two yard line did OG stall out? right here at the 40, but they got so many third downs were they able to flip the field, really change that second half, or first half also. And if you're OG, you keep doing what you're doing. No really need to adjust, right? You're running the football when you want to. You're using your play action game. You're doing a pretty good job. Keep Schrader involved in that passing game. I would go vertical at least one more time in the second half. It will be a defiance ball to begin our third quarter. As it looks like our teams are just about to ready to go. We talked uh, in our pregame about everything kind of riding on the line of four defiance, have a chance to snap what would be a long losing streak here in Ottawa. It has been 10 years since the Bulldogs have won here at Titan Stadium. I have the feeling this place probably looked a little bit different it sure last did, right? time defiance scored a win. Bulldogs also looking for uh, their first seven win season in quite some time and also their first uh, chance to host a playoff game for the first time since uh, I believe it was 2008 mm. last time or 2003 and maybe 2008 was the last seven win season and there's a lot of records for defiance currently sitting ninth a lot of uh, scoreboard watching goes on around the area yeah for my understanding tonight. the the help that they need to get it, it's going their way so far at halftime of other games but they've got to take care of their business here at og and you reference the decade of futility here at og for defiance but you got to remember a lot of teams have, have suffered that <laughs> here right? right and ken schreiner has done a great job here 28th year 28 years as the head coach Two and eight last year. They're gonna bounce back, maybe get a win here, go two and eight again this year. But in his tenure, how many times they've been to the playoffs? So I guess I ask you that question. Mm, of his 28 years, it's been uh, has it been 20? 16 times. Okay. Uh, that's how that's impressive bit. stuff. Only four losing seasons in his 28 years. That's a guy that knows how to get things done. Now, Tyler Hohenbrink had this teed up ball, kind of fell off the tee the first time. The officials held up play just long enough to put it back on. We are ready to go for the second half of action. <clears throat> so, Hohenberger sends this one high into the air. This one is going to be fielded in the end zone, and Defiance will have to start from their own 20-yard line. Boy, that was a healthy kick, wasn't it? Got it up in that wind that is blowing right to left. The flag is really showing how strong the wind is here. 
If you have a guy that can kick it in the end zone, tell him go ahead. No, yeah, absolutely. No, no reason to risk a return. Yeah, that wind might have helped out a little bit. But at any rate, forces defiance start from their own 20-yard line. Now, would you be in favor of teams getting at the 25, like in? Uh, you know, high school, it's tough enough to get not a lot of touchbacks. I'm okay with the 20-yard line. Yeah, you kick it in there, you deserve it, right? Here's Brogan Castillo on first down. He'll go straight ahead. A right, good pancake block leading the way by Matt Ariola, number 54, doing a good job leading it. Getting a good block by, by Romeo Valley, too, is center, number 62. Going back to pound it right between the tackles, what Castillo does best. Pickup of uh, just over five yards, we'll call it six, second and four from the 26. Zipful under pressure at all sorts of time to throw the football instead. He's going to be sacked for a loss back near the 20 yard line. And it's going to be Vinny Brinkman that comes through, gets the sack, and you get positive yardage for big yardage on first down, running the football. And all of a sudden, you're sacked for an eight yard loss. And Brinkman, great job getting there and getting the quarterback to the ground. And they're going to mark that up at the 21, so a loss of five. And it's going to be third and nine. 7-7, oh, seven, seven, 11, 11 minutes left to go, third quarter scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. See what Defiance has dialed up here on third down. As they go back to Castillo, Castillo out across the 25 is going to be short of the first down. And it looks like the Bulldogs will punt away their opening possession in the second half. And they brought Wilder in jet motion and then faked it him, gave it back to Castile. But the problem is, no need to really honor it because you haven't run jet sweep yet, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody's kind of looked at it, waited for it to come back there. And good run by Castile, but going to be short of the sticks. Fourth and four to find set punt team out. This one will be... Punt it away, a bit of a wobbler, hits at the 45, bounces straight in the air, and goes sideways before it is fielded. Defines trying to usher that along a little bit. That was Hutchison kind of pushing it. And I, don't, I don't think you can do the, uh, the catch and throw. That is going to be downed at about the 44-yard line. Yeah, smart by him, though, because he did finally pick it up and hand it to the official. Because, you know, if you just touch it, let it roll. The other team can pick it up and run with it. It's not down on a punt where you first touch it. You can pick it up and run, and if you fumble it, it doesn't matter. You still get the football on the offensive side. The Titans will have this one. Solid field position for their initial drive in the second half. Starting at their own 44. Two receivers come to the near side, one to the far side. And they will run out of it and able to sneak his way through a small opening up front. Grant Evers, Evers will get inside Defiance territory. Uh, Evers had himself a solid football game so far. Good positive yards on first down, and he might have been able to bust that, but Antonio Lopez, maybe a touchdown saving tackle to get him to the ground. Yeah, Evers was close. He's gonna pick up about seven. We're gonna call it second and three from the Defiance 49. Coleman in the shotgun, gives it off once again. And uh, trying to dance a little bit, Evers. The choppy feet, he'll get, it looks like, uh, maybe a yard or two. They will mark that up two yards to the 47. Jazz and Phillips, one of the last guys to get off the ground for defiance in on the tackle. Gave up a little bit of a gash on first down, it's tightened up on second down there. Sets up a big third and one, let's see if OG elects to go right at him again. This is where OG was at their best, converting on third down. Usually it was third and long. Third and one should be no problem. They work that right side. They will have enough for the first down going back to Brinkman. Brinkman down to the 45. That is uh, right about where he needed to be. Yeah, Brinkman, 315 yards coming into the night. Picks up some more right there. Another big third down conversion for OG. They have been very efficient on third down here tonight. They've got it at the 45. Nearing eight and a half minutes left to go, third quarter. Titans shorten this game up as much as possible. Coleman this time will pull it back, keeps it himself, and he's gonna be taken out of bounds as Anthony Wilder had him in his sights. Yeah, good read. Put it into back's belly. 
Let them ride it for a while, pull it. If nobody collapses, or if someone collapses, go ahead and pull it and get outside. Looked like it was going to be a bigger gainer, but Wilder showed up in a hurry. Coleman will get a yard. We'll call it second and nine from the 44. Coleman. And we're going to get a flag here. Coleman might have flinched a little bit before he got the snap. This is going to be a false start. Yeah, I'm going to take up for the offensive lineman on this, right? If you're going to go up and you're kind of meander as a quarterback at the line of scrimmage and wait and wait and wait, you can't expect the offensive lineman to stay there forever, right? We're big guys. We want to get the momentum going forward. You know, get up there and get it snapped. Don't make them wait. Right? Yeah, and I, just, I don't want to be hunched down in three-point stands all night. No. Come on, skinny guy. Say hut. Second and 14 now after the penalty. Coleman looking to throw, trying to set his feet. Backed up, and finally he's able to get rid of this one into the Defiance bench. Defiance coaches wanted a penalty call, but it doesn't look like they'll get anything. Yeah, they wanted to hold on the outside, and I thought maybe they were going to get it. That wasn't a hold. That's about as close as you can get without getting it called. I believe it was number 37 for Defiance Stockman that was applying to pressure. And somebody had a handful of jersey, but must not have been enough. Another big third down, third and 15. Something that OG picked up in the first half. Let's see if Defiance has tightened up the secondary. And OG comes out the Four receivers set, three receivers come to the near side. There's your Coleman screen. wants to throw that way. Had everyone set up right in the middle of the field. This one is to Ethan Metzger, and Metzger is going to have enough for the Titan first down. Now just run a middle screen from your slot. Defiance had it called right. It only rushed three, dropped eight in the coverage. But the five offensive linemen for OG did a great job of leaking up and getting a block on people. A lot of times linemen on a screen will run a field and let guys run by them. OG that time got on somebody, allowed the third down to be converted yet again for OG. That picked up 23. We also want to tell you that our instant replays tonight brought to you by the Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. First and 10 from the 26. Man goes in motion. Titans are going to run that way with Brinkman, and Brinkman able to power his way for at least a couple of yards. Now play pretty well by Defiance, but it's going to still get positive yards by OG because Brinkman fell forward. You know, what did Defiance do, though? They saw the H-back come in motion. That's where the run's going to go. They have recognized that time and time again. Been really good against that H-back motion for OG. Officially a gain of a yard. It's going to be second, a very short nine, a long eight. How about eight and a half? Yeah. Eight and three quarters? Yeah, right around All there. Right. Coleman looking to throw once again. And this one's going to be the over, uh, over the head of everyone. Incomplete looking for Dane Dooling. It was a uh, impressive arm to get that Titan touchdown in the opening half. Just misses the mark there. Yeah, what an athlete Dane Dooling is, huh? Plays on the inside defensively. Takes on run coming right at him. That time runs a little skinny post. Gets the corner to flip his hips, the hips and comes back inside. A little bit better to throw. They had a touchdown. Third and nine coming up here for the Titans. Coleman with the give. This is back to Brinkman. And Brinkman is going to be short of the first down as that was read pretty well by the Bulldogs. Right, Kelton Gibbs, number 32, made the tackle and ran into I think it was his dad had been pregame wearing a 32 blue jersey. And I said, how many plays you got left in you if you're going to play? He says, I, I can play a couple plays tonight. No, you can't. Isn't that great? All these guys that used to play football always mm -hmm. think they could play still. He said, I could give you a half if you need it, Coach. No, no, you could. Appreciate the effort, but I don't know. He said he has one good play in him. Oh, that's perfect. Fourth down coming up here for the Titans. After the gain of a yard, Coleman looking to throw. This one is going to be caught. 
Defiance trying to take that away, but that is hauled in as the laser to Grant Schrader is going to be enough for another Titan first down. Yeah, who else, right? You go to Grant Schrader when you need a big catch. Time and time again, he's come up. It's been third down that has killed Defiance, but this time it was fourth down. And what about that throw and an absolute dart? Where it had to be, Schrader could catch it and turn up field get that first down. Titans are now in the red zone tonight, brought to you by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. First and 10 from the 14, a little uh, razzle-dazzle as Jaden Steckscholdy lines up. A quarterback gets the call there. How about you breaking out the razzle-dazzle call? That was fantastic, Seth Schulte coming in. I guess their version, every team has this, right? Where you put mm -hmm. someone in to run the quarterback lead out of a power formation. Positive yardage again for Ottawa Glandor. Pick up four on the run's gonna bring up second and six from the 10. 12th play of the drive coming up here, already down. Five minutes left to go, third quarter. Staying with Steck Schulte, the junior at quarterback. Stexually high snap has trouble with it and he's gonna fall on it back at about the 17 yard line and The snap is a little bit to the right of Stexulty He was able to fall on or else it would have been a nightmare for OG and Let's see what OG likes to do. Yeah, they're gonna bring the regular quarterback Kuhlman back in Big loss of seven it's gonna bring up third and 13 and back at the 17 yard line Kuhlman back in. Brinkman has a sidecar to his left. Kuhlman drops back. Set up the screen. The lineman for Defiance saw it coming, and they're going to stop him for a short game. Yeah, how about Abel Rubio? Great job of knifing through all that blue wave in front of him, making the tackle, getting Schrader to the ground. I believe OG gonna try and kick the field goal here. Yeah, it looks like they wanna take the lead here, trying to take advantage of the wind at their back. Well, he's one for one on the year, kicking field goals. So here's Hohenbrink from about 32, 33 yards out, it looks like. Snap is down, field goal on the way, and it's gonna be no good. And they're gonna say it went to the right, from our vantage point, it looked like it had gone through. Yeah, I thought so as well. Hey, Got to give a lot of credit to Defiance. Did you see what OG did there? Try to entice them to jump. The offensive lineman snapped down to a three-point stance at the last second. Try to get Defiance to jump offside. Good job, good discipline by the guys up front. 14-play drive comes up short on points. And with three and a half minutes to go in the third period, Bulldogs of Defiance will take over once again from their own 20-yard line. Zipfel in a shotgun. Fake it to the first man through. They'll go back to Castillo. Fake that jet sweep. Been kind of waiting on that out of Wilder. The second time they've run it, ran it on third down last time, have yet to give it to Wilder on the jet sweep. That was Schrader who had good discipline to linebacker, waited for Castile to come back, make the tackle. Pick but three on the run is going to bring up second and seven. Zipfold not in a hurry here. Uh, no one behind him, Zipful. Looked like at first he was waiting for someone to get rid of the football too, then realized he was all alone in the backfield and is able to at least keep that to a no gain as opposed to a loss. Yeah, definitely a miscommunication. Yeah, remember, this is a team that goes to the line of scrimmage to call their plays and mm -hmm. everybody looks at the wristband. You know, sometimes you're gonna have miscommunication. You see Coach Cooper on the sideline looking at his Denny's menu and then he signals it in. Third down. Third and seven. Is his Denny's menu the same as like Andy Reid's <laughs> Denny's menu? Yeah, it is funny. And all of them use the different colors too. Zipfel looking to throw. As time, this one caught middle of the field. He'll have Rodenberger. Uh, yeah, Rodenberger, excuse me. Rodenberger able to get out to the 40 yard line before he's knocked down. So this time it is Defiance who's able to convert a big third down. Yeah, Rodenberger, big physical player, usually on defense, laying down the hit that time. 
A little bit of a drag route across behind the linebackers in front of the safety. Found the open spot. Big catch for him and a bigger first down conversion for this defiance team. And picks up 17 there. Zipful back in the shotgun goes back once again to Castillo. Castillo will get a couple before the bottom of the pile where Brinkman is able to bring him down. One of the things that OG does defensively that's tough is you never really know who's going to be at the second level. They always have the three down linemen, right? And they're going to try and eat up as many offensive linemen as possible. And so it's impossible for those linemen to get up field and find guys. That time Brinkman came free. His guys up front did a good job. Pick four on the run is going to bring up second and six from the 44. Back to the ground once again as Castillo was going to lower the head, take a hit. He did just that and went straight down. And that was a heck of a collision, wasn't it? He might be slow to get up. There's Castillo and looks like the uh, tackler for Defiance for out of Glandorf, excuse me. They're still both kind of tangled up on the ground. Yeah, that was Schrader who read fullback come at you. What do you do? You fill in a hurry. That was the old youth football. You should stand five yards away with the ball. I'll stand five yards away. Let's run at each other. That's how football used to be played. Physicality, that was fun to watch. It's a yard gain. It's going to bring up third and five from the 45-yard line. <clears throat> Zipful just able to get this off. Here is a handoff. That is going to be shy of the first down as, as Abel Rubio with it. A decision time now for Defiance. Yeah, you get the quarter break to make your mind up here. That was kind of done by design. Yeah, I think you don't get antsy, right? Play a little field position, maybe punt the ball here. If it was fourth and one or maybe a, a yard and a half go, I think this might be a little bit too far to go. That's going to be about two and a half yards for Defiance. So they'll have the quarter break to make up their minds of what they want to do. Three quarters of the books. We'll take a break here at WOSF. from their own 47. Partners, this a ploy just nice. maybe to get OG offside. Back it up to punt. Yep. Mishandle this, gets the quick kick. Awesome. And this one oh, is going to be a loose it. football. And it looks like the Titans are going to fall upon it back in the five-yard line. Heads up play running back there. Grant Evers, number 18, is the one. That's going to fall on top of it and keep this drive for out of Landor. Yeah, both sides held their breath on that one, right? First it was a snap to Zeppel. I don't know how he even caught it and then had to wear it all to even punt it. And then all of a sudden, why is OG bouncing? Bouncing it like a basketball back there. Evers goes back and cleans it up for his buddy. Saves possession. It would have been huge for Defiance had they been able to recover that one. 11.51 remaining. And the Titans will have this one. They're going to call it their own six. Coleman in a shotgun. Give the handoff, coming straight ahead. And a good run on first down, and that is going to be near a first down. Well, you could know that the H-back is coming in motion. They're going to run there. And sometimes it doesn't matter when you have a hammer like Schrader. 42, clearing a path. Tell me that young man doesn't like physicality. Gain a nine on the run. It's going to bring up second and one. back in motion once again. Here's the handoff as OG is continuing to move forward going with Evers and he'll have enough for the tight first down. Now you want to know why Joey Robinson number 17 has 101 tackles for this defiance defense coming in tonight? It's because he knows how to play his position at linebacker. Did you see him take Schrader on that time? Take it on with a proper arm, inside arm, kept the outside free so he could get off the block and make the tackle. Great linebacker technique that time. First down for the Titans out at their own 17-yard line. Go back to Evers again, able to work that left side and then cuts up field. 
He'll get two of up to 20, so we'll give him three. You just get the feeling there's going to be something catastrophic in this football game that's going to change the complexion, doesn't it? You know, it may be a punt that's rolling that hits someone where it shouldn't, or someone fumbles the football. You know, both teams not wanting to blink in this game might be one of those unforced errors that causes the other team to win. Second and seven now from the 20 yard line. And another good run here. Now it's going to be Coleman that keeps it. Fake the inside and bounce it back on the quarterback keeper. I think he's sending a message over to that sideline and say, Coach, you don't have to put Stesh Schulte in. I can run the football. Coleman's able to get about five. It's going to be third and short. Third and one. I'll pass the 25, closer to the 26. Titans need to basically move the football to the next yard marker to get a first down. They'll get two opportunities here. Coleman looking to throw. As a man in the middle of the field, drops that one in for the first down. And Dane Dooling stepped up. He's had a huge night tonight. Yeah, Dane Dooling, yeah, another big play. Coleman drops this one in the bucket as well. Comes off the play fake. Has his big receiver going up the seam. Holds on through contact. Another huge play for OG. Yet again, a drive that started deep. And they get across midfield again. 27 yards on the pass play. And again, our instant replays tonight brought to you by the Union Bank. The Union Bank committed to you. See the H-back coming in motion. And Alex Schrader, quick pitch running to the near side. That's going to be for a good yardage. They come back to Evers. And it looks like he's going to have enough for another OG first down inside the 40. Now this defiance defense is reeling a little bit. The big conversions have come back to haunt them. And this time, the big block by Schrader on the perimeter to spring at the run game for OG, haunting that defiance defense. Big Batan on the run. It's a first down to the 38. Eight and a half minutes remaining on our scoreboard brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio. Single receiver each way. Coleman in that shotgun gives back to Evers. Evers this time will get about a yard working that left side. And it's Andrew Arizari that comes up with a tackle, playing the outside linebacker position. Great recognition. Sees counter coming back towards him. He knifed through it, played low, squeeze it back in, try to make the tackle. Took on two guys and then made the tackle. Fantastic work. Give him a yard on the run. We'll call it second and nine from the 37. Late substitution coming in for OG. Yeah, OG looks like trying to change up some personnel, and maybe they had someone with an equipment issue. Looks like they got the right grouping in that they want. Faking the run, throwing this one up. Schrader, a little hand fighting down the sideline. It's incomplete, but a flag comes out at the end. No, oh, Defiance is going to go crazy on this call if it's going to be defensive pass interference. Officials are going to talk about this one. And now, what's the call going to be here? And it is the defensive pass interference called on Defiance. And they're going to call it on Logan Hutchison, number one. Well, a couple things on it, right? Was it catchable? You know, that's the thing, and how much contact was going down that one guy got an advantage. I thought both guys were kind of contacting each other. Nobody really got an advantage out of it. Tough call for Defiance. 15-yard walk-off will move this down to the 22-yard line. I do like the call by OG, though, right? Take a shot, go yeah, vertical again. It's Coolman looking to throw once again. He'll get this one, and it is caught by Grant Schrader. Schrader will have it inside the 20, and OG back inside the Wright State University Lake Campus Red Zone. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Now, partner, remember this, okay? That's already the second time they've run that little quick out and gotten a completion for about five yards. You know what's coming, right? The out and up, especially when you have a, cor a corner against it that has been struggling. 
Second and six coming up here. Well, Trouble oh. with the snap. That's going to allow the Defiance defense to rally to the football, and they're going to come up with a big stop. Oh, boy, talk about film study, right? Abel Rubio, he recognized that one in a hurry. Shot the gap. Mr. Sudden, Abel Rubio makes another big tackle, third down and long. If you're Defiance, you normally get excited about third and long, right? <laughs> and it's been tough for him all night it long. It has been third down. It's been solid for the Titans. They're back to a third and 10 from the Defiance 22. And that clock just continuing to tick away. We've got under seven minutes left to play in this one. Now, Coleman's been fantastic on money downs all night long. Coleman rolling under pressure, steps up, fires. This one is going to be incomplete. As Logan Hutchinson comes up with a stop there. Now, Hutchinson's had himself a little bit of a tough night, but not that time. Makes a huge play. Swiping that ball out. Didn't get the interference call because he played it through the receiver, not behind the receiver. Great defensive technique that time by Logan Hutchison. Well, fourth and ten coming up. Last time uh, the Titans were this deep into Defiance territory. They elected to go for the field goal. It was no good this time. About five yards deeper, they're going to go for it. Hey, Defiance brings some pressure here. Don't let Kuhlman sit back. Fourth and 10 from the 22. Kuhlman steps up under a little bit of pressure. Comes in the near sideline, fires, and coming back to the football. It's going to come out. It's incomplete. Looking for, I believe, that Schrader to the near sideline. Schrader trying to get back to the football. Just had to come out late. Yeah, Schrader tried to grit his hands underneath it. A comeback route, working his way back to his, his quarterback, Kuhlman. But Hutchison again made a play. Make sure the official didn't have any doubt. Knock the ball free. Defiance gave up all kinds of third down and fourth down conversions on that drive, but able to stiffen once it got close to the red zone. So the Bulldogs will take over. 6.40 left to play. They're gonna call Ball's on the ground. Three fumble! And they're going to unpile the bodies, and it looks like the Titans come away with the football. As Jaden Steck showed number five, who showed it to the crowd. And whether or not he's the one that got it, or if he's the one that won the battle after the battle. Yeah, it looked like it was an exchange issue. And then the ball hit the ground and the lineman kicked it. And Seth Schulte recognized it, fell on it. Gotta give him credit, he didn't try to pick it up and score, right? No. How many times you see a guy try yep. to pick up and score and then lose it? Fell on it, because he knows they're already in great field position. Yeah, uh, just as Miles said, it might be the big play. Titans gonna have it at the Defiance 24 with just over six and a half minutes left to play. There's that stretch play, first down Evers. And he's gonna get a yard or so. Boy, it is just almost impossible to hook Irizarry. Number seven, Andrew Irizarry playing outside linebacker for Defiance. Great job again of forcing everything back inside. His buddies rallied up. Great defense by Defiance. Gain of a yard on the play is going to bring up second and nine. Ottawa Glandorf and the Defiance 22 after the fumble. Next snap will come with under six minutes to go in this one. Three receivers to the near side for Kuhlman. Kuhlman looking. Has time, has the man open, fires, passes complete. Went back to Ethan Metzger. And he has close to a first down. See where they're going to mark this. Looks like just short. But OG back inside the Wright State University Lake Campus Red Zone at the 14 yard line. So pick up of eight. And it's going to be third and one. Now, I don't know like, how he held on to it. Rodenberger just drilled right through him, almost knocked the ball loose. Great effort to hold on to the football. Oh, well, that pass almost drilled right through Metzger's I think had some mustard on it. Third and one coming up here for the Titans. Kuhlman gives Evers looking for a yard, and I'm not sure if he got it. It was stonewalled right to the 15-yard line. He might have lost a yard there. Yeah, he's going to come up short, fourth down. I think they're bringing out the kicking unit again. And again, a red zone tonight brought to you by the Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. So for the second time tonight, Tyler Hohenbrink coming on to attempt a field goal. This one will be from 32 yards out. A strong wind in his face. 
Schrader to hold, high snap kick is on its way, and this time no issues into the OG student section, and the field goal is good. So Owen Brink gets the 32-yard field goal, puts the Titans on top, 10-7 with 427 to play. We'll take a break here on WOSN. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Well, Miles, you said it was going to be something. Saw the turnover. Good news, bad news. Got the turnover. Only got three out of it, so Defiance still a little bit of light. Yeah, left. left the door open for Defiance, and uh, got a couple questions about that field goal, right? Did the students get to keep it? <laughs> that ball goes in the student section. They should be able to keep the football, don't they? High kick. This one fielded near the 15-yard line. And this is a good return out past midfield. Thought that was Rubio, but that appeared to be a double-digit number. I do not think that was him. Yeah, it's Lopez. Was well, the Antonio Lopez guy we haven't really talked a whole lot about tonight. And the Bulldogs are going to have solid field position here with 419 to play. Yeah, Lopez one man away from celebrating into the end zone. Nice return. Kind of reeling a little bit after trailing on the scoreboard after the field goal. What well, makes you feel better than a great return in the plus yardage? Great job by Lopez getting his team in good position. You know, Defiance put together a 13 play drive in the opening quarter to score their touchdown. They've run 20 plays since then. First down run will get inside the 45 by Castillo down to about the 44. Yeah, another broken play. It's about the third one for this Defiance offense. Might want to start huddling, right? If you can't get the communication down, huddle it up, make sure everybody's on the same page. Very fortunate they got positive yardage there. Head, head coach Travis Cooper of the Bulldogs yelling at his guys. Coach Cooper, by the way, with a win tonight, I believe will get number 90 in his career. Good run here, is working his way through his able Rubio. Rubio's gonna get inside the 40 near the 35. That should be enough for a Defiance first down. Yeah, it's really the, where the Defiance run game has been efficient tonight, right? Going between the tackles, mm -hmm. that three-man front from OG, if they're able to take care of those guys and work their way up the linebackers, no matter what front that they're getting with the linebackers, they can meet them. Then with seven on the run, it's gonna be enough for the first down. Go back to Rubio, but he's going to be met by a handful of Titans with the first one being Jaden Stetschulde. Now, if you want to, as a defensive line coach, if you want to show how to take on a trap block, you put in Vinny Brinkman's film right there. That was just unbelievable. Recognized Ariola was going to try and kick him out. What'd he do? Just took him out at the knees, forced everything inside of him. Great work by Brinkman. Game's going to go for a couple. We're going to call it second and eight with the, at the uh, 35. Now under three to play in this one. Got the seal. Here's play to the outside. Trying to turn the corner is Rubio. We'll get a couple more. And they continue to move that forward. It might be closer to four or five. I know you have to run to the boundary once in a while, but when you run stretch or outside plays to the boundary, what happens is you just run out of room, right? That's what happened with Rubio. If you're an Ohio State fan, you, you gotta just drives you nuts how many times Ryan Day calls outside zone to the boundary. That time Defiance runs at the boundary. And they'll pick up three on that run. Go to Rubio again, trying the other way. He's got Castillo's the lead block. Flag coming in here. Run's gonna be a big one for a first down, but have to see what the penalty is. You might believe this is gonna go on Wilder on the outside. Yeah, I'm not sure it is, right? Does he get his head across? You know, just because the defender doesn't see you, it doesn't mean it's a bad block. And the officials getting together here. That's going to be a huge call in this football game. White Hat is picked up, picked up the flag, first of all. Picked it up, put it away, not picked it up because they are going to not use it. But we will get... Mm. Yeah. So, blindside block, they're going to say the... the it's tough. That is tough because it's a defender on the line of scrimmage. You're coming back to seal it. Mm -hmm. That is a tough call. Usually that blindside block was put in, you know, for big blocks that are outside the tackle box right. where guys are running back and they don't see them. I'm not sure that was the intent of the rule when they put it in on the line of scrimmage like that. 
Well, that's Huge a costly penalty. One. Yeah, that's going to back Defiance way up back to uh, near where this drive started. Actually, it's going to be exactly where this drive started back in the 48. Yeah, Defiance better hurry up. We're going to be inside of two minutes here. I'm going to call this third and about 20, it looks like, near the 48 yard line. Zipful with an empty backfield, gets the snap. Steps up, looks to throw, right. long throw. This pass is going to be caught. Way shy of first down yardage, but they're able to get something positive out to TJ Kellermeyer. Yeah, Kellermeyer, smart play, getting out of bounds also. But gets a third down or fourth down here, about 14. He got to go, and he didn't have to call a timeout. So if you don't get it, you still have three timeouts to stop OG with. The yeah, Bulldogs with the fourth and 14 with the 41. They're down 10 7 with a minute 50 to go. And now, go with the flea flicker. Zipful looking for someone. Steps up, is going to fire this one into the end zone. And it's going to be caught for the touchdown. One on one coverage into the corner. And Castillo got all the way free. And he's going to haul it in for the Dale's concrete and decorative stamping touchdown. Oh, Otto Glandorf's just got to be sick to their stomach because they had this played extremely well. Had a quarters coverage, safeties just played back deep. Castile came out of the backfield, ran a wheel rod on the flea flicker, and just kept going vertical. Zip will give him credit, allowed his playmaker to make a play, 50-50 ball, and the Punisher makes a great catch. With a flea flicker. Gives the Bulldogs the lead. They will tack on the extra point tonight. Brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Give them a call. 419-384-3392. So Defiance will take the 14-10 lead. And we'll take a timeout here on WOSF. on the return, and it looks like Otto Glandorf's gonna start with their own 25. Yeah, big collision, who again? Abel Rubio, number six, flying down. You know, you think of Broken Castile, the Punisher, you think of big runs, right? Physicality. You don't think of him going up high and winning one-on-one -on -one battles on, on passes in the end zone. That shows you what a versatile player he is. Desire, a big thing, isn't it? It is. Titans are going to need a touchdown. They got a minute 35 to do it. They're going to start at their own 26. Both teams with a full complement of timeouts. Uh, no need to panic if you're out of Glendorf. If you have three timeouts, you can work everything in your pass game. Coleman with time, fires to the sideline. Pass is caught and able to turn up field as Ethan Metzger before getting out of bounds. Stop the clock here with a minute 27 to play. Yeah, Defiance got to be careful not to just relax and play three men on pressure and dropping eight continuously. If I was them, I'd start bringing outside pressure. Coleman, when he's done his best work, it's been moving out of the pocket just enough to get himself a window. Big 16 on the first down play, and now the Titans out to their own 42. Defiance still playing with about seven in the box. Kuhlman stepping up, looks to throw, hit as he throws. That one's gonna end up in the bench incomplete. Now a little bit better job getting pressure brought for that time. And Joey Robinson gonna get to the quarterback. Kuhlman, who's a little bit slow to get up. And Defiance saying there is no receiver in the area. Should be intentional grounding, but not gonna get the call. And now the official's asking if the play clock gets reset. Clock stopped right now with a minute 21 to go, second and 10 from the 42. This would be a really good screen down if Ottawa Glandorf wants to break it out. How big is that missed field goal looming? It could be a 14-13, but instead of 14 10s, the Titans are going to need six. Coleman sets. Fires this time comes the opposite way. That one is going to be caught as Griffin Seaman comes in. The second time tonight, what an impressive throw 
Just throws it over top the outside linebacker between the corner and the outside linebacker. Puts it in just that small little window. But Coleman has been impressive, making big throw after big throw. Assignment with it gets 13. It's a first down at the 45. And now we've got whistles and we have a timeout. We do. So, I think OG thought the ball had gotten out of bounds and it was going to get stopped, so the coaching staff didn't call timeout, then recognized that the clock was right. They really lost about seven seconds there before they called the timeout. So with the timeout, we'll step aside as well here. OG trying to drive for the win. Just a little high looking for Grant Evers. Yeah, Evers kind of working back towards the middle of the field. A little bit of a dangerous throw by Coleman. And you saw number 13, Howerton, lurking in the secondary. One more step, he was going to be able to pick that off on the deflection. Second and, and 10 coming up here for Ottawa Glandorf. Exactly one minute remaining. What a way to wrap up the regular season here in Northwest Ohio. Now look at the guy Schrader here to the near side, one-on-one -on -one against Hutchison. Take a shot if you're OG. Coleman one hands the snap, a little pressure coming from the outside. He'll fire, try to get this one in, and it's going to be incomplete. Official right on top of that. And they're going to say the nose of the football touch first. And Howerton did not complete that before it hit the ground. Howerton just reading the eyes of the quarterback, playing in the middle of the field, making sure no one got deeper in him on the hash. Lurked in the middle, almost got underneath it. And if this was a Sunday game, we'd be sitting here for 30 minutes as they reviewed it. Third and 10 coming up, but more importantly, clock at 55 seconds. Titans still with two timeouts remaining. Play clock at seven. OG gonna have to hurry as they got the play in late. Coleman wants the snap, just gets it off in time. Looks, he's gonna load up, fires this one, and this time it is intercepted. And I believe that is uh, Lopez who is gonna come away with that one. And Defiance will have to run a couple of plays here, but it looks like the Bulldogs are going to end a long losing streak here at Titan Stadium. Well, I remember Lopez had the great kickoff return to set up that Bulldog touchdown after the field goal by OG, and then just plays that third of the field, waits for the ball to come up, doesn't even worry about the receiver, goes and high points that football. Biggest play of the year for, for Defiance on that interception. 45 seconds left. The Titans with two timeouts. So they can stop the clock a couple of times if they choose to do so. And there will be one kneel of the football, and it looks like OG will use one of those timeouts. Stops the clock here, 42 seconds remaining. Yeah, that last play by OG, remember they got the play in real late. Everybody was kind of scrambling, down to about two and one on the play clock when it was was kind of snapped and just felt like the play was out of sorts. Maybe it would have been better served calling that second time out, making sure everybody was on the same page before that interception by Lopez. So Defiance will take, looks like at least one more knee. They'll probably have to do it twice. And everyone around the WBL, well, especially Defiance looking at some scoreboard watching. Still early in the fourth quarter, last report, Wapak with a lead over Salina, 30-3. to three. Which that plays into Defiance's favor. That's a little bit of a surprising score there. That it's that lopsided, both teams, fantastic seasons. Wapakoneta, of course, lost to Defiance early in the year, but boy, since then, they have just been on a tear. Well, all you gotta do if you're Defiance is catch the snap, and then take a knee. Do that a couple times, and you're going to get your first win in here when it seems like 100 years. Not going to get too crazy like Miami. <laughs> Here's the next snap here, and OG will use the timeouts. 
So, or, since the Titans with the timeout, they'll take a quick one as well. Here under a minute to go. Defiance trying to run out this win. And we'll take a break. Third down coming up here for Defiance. Otto Glandorf has taken uh, both of their timeouts here as the uh, Bulldogs take a couple of knees. Miles, you did some math during the... Uh, well, you always need some help from the officials, right? If they spot it in a hurry, mm -hmm. right here after you kneel down, Defiance might have to punt the football. Let's see where they're going to spot it. We're at 36 right now, and that's going to be it. Yeah, they waited just long enough, so the difference between our play clock and game clock, about two and a half seconds. So all Defiance had to do was take the one final knee, and they're going to come out of here with a win. 14-10, Defiance is going to hang on here. Guarantees them a seven-win season, something that hasn't happened in a while. More than likely, depending on how everything plays out, perhaps at a home playoff game, something that hasn't happened in a while. And more importantly, at least for tonight, a win here at Titan Stadium, another thing that hasn't happened for Defiance. Yeah, they got to feel good, right? right? For Defiance, this was a game that had all the looks like, well, OG outplayed us, or we turned the ball over, and they're going to win the game, and you get that, that play that everybody's going to remember for about 30 years, right? <laughs> In about 20 years, it was going to be a throw from the 10-yard line. That's and right. Castile went Castillo up and jumped, jumped through eight nine guys. In the air and, oh, yeah, it's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, but what a great effort, uh, great battle by both these football teams. We are uh, privileged to be here to call this one. It's a fun night here, 14-10. Defiance is able to get the win over Ottawa Glandorf again. The uh, Bulldogs will move on at 7-3. and three. They've guaranteed themselves a spot in the playoffs. And we said it in our pregame, what can you say about the Titans? 1-9 and nine doesn't tell you the type of season that the Titans had this year. How about the character, right? How many 1-8 and eight teams would have gone out and fought like that across the state of Ohio, right? Usually your 1-8 and eight teams are kind of packed it in. They're already looking to clear out their locker. Not these guys. That tells you that Coach Schreiner still has the pulse of his football team. Great job by them, giving a great battle. It's 14 10 again, the final. I want to thank everyone uh, for watching here on WOSN. Of course, our uh, great crew braving the elements tonight. A little cold and windy out there, but uh, Cassie and Megan did a great job. Tough, aren't they? I'll put them against any other camera crew. They're working hard tonight. Great job, ladies. So 14 10 again, the final. Support my partner, Miles Holiday, and her entire WOSN crew. I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.